scab definition it is a soft tissue covering the vault of the skull <coughs> extent the scab extends anteriorly up to the superciliary arches posteriorly it extends up to the superior nuchal lines laterally it extends up to the superior temporal line layers of the scalp the scalp is made of five layers they are skin connective tissue or superficial fascia aponeurosis of occipital frontalis loose areola tissue and the periosteum or pericranium skin the skin of the scalp is thick and it is rich in hair follicles and sebaceous glands hence it is the most common site of sebaceous cyst connective tissue or superficial fascia it is made up of dense fibrous connective tissue which binds the skin to the underlying aponeurosis the blood vessels of the scalp are present in the connective tissue layer aponeurosis or gallia aponeurotica it is made up of occipital frontalis muscle and its aponeurosis the occipital frontalis muscle has two bellies okay anteriorly frontal bellies and posteriorly occipital bellies and in between it is connected by the aponeurosis the posterior belly that is the occipital belly of occipital frontalis arises from superior nuchal lines the frontal belly of occipital frontalis do not have any bony attachment it arises from the skin over the superciliary arches these two bellies are connected in the middle by the aponeurosis a transverse cut in the aponeurosis causes gaping of the scalp loose areola tissue as the name indicates this layer is made up of loose areola tissue which is traversed by emissary veins pericranium it is the outer periosteal covering it covers the surface of the bones of the wall it is loosely attached to the surface of the bone and it is firmly attached to the sutural membranes blood supply the scalp is rich in blood supply it is supplied by five main arteries number 1 supra trochlear artery number 2 supra orbital artery number 3 superficial temporal artery number 4 posterior orbicular artery number 5 occipital artery the three arteries are lying in front of the auricle the remaining two arteries are lying behind the auricle the supra trochlear and supra orbital arteries are the branches from the internal carotid artery later three branches arise from the external carotid artery thus the site of the scalp acts as a potential collateral circulation between the external and internal carotid arteries nerve supply of the scalp the scalp has both sensory and motor nerve supply sensory nerve supply of the scalp it has eight 
nerves which is sensory in nature four in front of the auricle four behind the auricle the nerves which is present in front of the auricle are supratrochlear supraorbital zygomatico temporal and auricolo temporal the nerves present behind the auricle are great auricular nerve lesser occipital nerve greater occipital nerve and third occipital nerve motor supply of the scalp it is supplied by two branches which arise from the facial nerve that is the sound cranial nerve okay temporal branch of the facial nerve supplies the frontal belly of the occipital frontalis the posterior auricular nerve supplies the occipital belly of occipital frontalis applied anatomy dangerous area of scalp the loose areolar tissue is known as the dangerous area of the scalp because the blood and pus freely tends to collect in this layer infection from the scalp may pass to the intracranial dural venous sinuses through the emissary veins present in this layer because it connects the superficial veins of the scalp with the intracranial dural venous sinuses black eye the blood and fluid collecting in the loose areolar tissue cannot pass either into the occipital or temporal region due to the attachment of the aponeurosis of occipital frontalis but it can pass anteriorly into the eyelids since the frontal belly of occipital frontalis do not have any bony attachments so this may lead to hematoma that is collection of blood in the eyelids which causes black discoloration around the eye a condition known as black eye thank you